Hi everybody, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Welcome back to the channel. And uh, here in front of us we have a box. And it's a very, very nice box. And it's a very, very well packed box. And as you know, I'm big on packaging. This has come all the way from South Korea, from Pontos. And this is a engine upgrade set for the fairly new Trumpeter 116th SDKFZ251. And it's all 3D printed and it's made by Pontos. Now, you won't be able to buy this from Pontos because Pontos have worked in collaboration with William over at King's Detailing. So I'm going to take this out of this box. Look at that. that is, it's beautifully made, nice thick packaging, and it arrives completely undamaged. So, um, just get this out of the way before we start. Exclusive sale by email to kinggang5512 at gmail.com. Visiting Facebook page, King's Detailing. You need to get in touch with this guy. People, I've done reviews for him before and people have said, where can I get it from? You go to this Facebook page and the information is on there. It will tell you the price, how much the shipping is to where you are in the world, how to pay, the information they need. Basically, the set is 61 US dollars. Postage varies across the world. And what you do is you go to the Facebook page and in there you will find... Um, where you can actually pay and you basically through PayPal you send him the money that he requires you send him your name address and you must you must include your telephone number put it in the notes or something you must include your telephone number because otherwise he can't ship internationally without a telephone number on the packaging so that's where you get it from so please don't ask me in the comments where to get this from because it's all there, okay? You won't be able to get this from Pontos. It's the same with the uh, Yamato uh, update set. That came, that's a collaboration between William, which is King's Detailing, and Pontos. Okay, and I'm sure there'll be more like this to come. So this is an engine detail upset for the Trumpeter 00942-00943 and I'm sure there's going to be many more in the range that Trumpeter will release but basically the kit has no engine so William has thought well I'll, I'll produce an engine for it and beautifully made it is so on the front of the box here we can see we've got the actual engine here with the bulkhead detail and everything nice to see that they've put the bulkhead detail in um, if you've got the Meng M911 and you buy the Meng engine, which is ridiculously expensive for what it is, you don't get any other engine bay detail. So basically you've got a great, beautiful resin engine, but you've just got a flat plastic panel for a bulkhead. You've got no other internal detail for the engine bay at all. So really complete waste of time. Don't bother. Don't waste your money. So this one is complete. It's beautiful. Um, we have the engine, we have the bulkhead, we have the radiator with the cooling fans. There's lots and lots of bits and pieces in here. We've got photo etch, we've got dry transfers. You can see down here we've got um, 54 3D printed parts. We've got 11 CNC produced turn brass parts, that'll be. Um, one photo etch sheet. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Dry transfers, one sheet. So uh, I got a bit lost there. So I've got dry transfers, photo etch, turn brass, and uh, 3D printed parts. You can see around this other side of the box there, there again, there's the image of all the 3D printed parts that you're getting in the box. And then the on, on the end, it's basically the same. We've got a different view of the engine there. And there's another view there. Okay. So you may decide to get this um, even if you want to upgrade your Dasvert kit because I've heard there are some issues with the Dasvert kit. I don't know, it's just people that view my channel have commented when I did my review. So first things first, we'll have a look at the instructions. Um, and as we can see here, on the first page we've basically got our call-outs. So you can see up here we've got all our brass parts. Okay, make sure you check through your parts, make sure you check they're all there. Um, and if they're not, get in touch with Pontos or King's Detailing, whatever. Uh, and then you get your dry transfer sheet there. And then you've got your photo etch sheet there. That's where your radiator grills and everything. And then here it's showing you typical Pontos style. You have to remove some plastic part A3. You have to remove that part. I'm not even sure what plastic part A3 is. Um, there it is there. So it's part of the it's part of the sort of front front chassis rail top piece 
um, on the left hand side. Uh, and then here what he's doing is showing you in orange we've got all the little um, points that are actually supporting little supports from where it's 3D printed and here they're showing you that's with all the supports fitted and that's with them all taken out. Same here all the all the parts all the points on there need to be removed all on this side and you can see as you go through they're showing you all the points removed and then what you end up with how the finished part looks. You can see here R03 you can see there with all the points on there and that's how it should look. To remove these take your time nice new pair of sharp cutters go in work around from the outside and then break the part pins away and then go in and just keep working your way through and get in there. Failing that you can use a hot knife you can use an ultrasonic knife just be careful using a hot knife because especially in areas like this if you go in with a hot knife and you're hanging around you may actually the heat may affect the the um, the adjacent parts so just take your time and, and, and do it and you'll be fine and the beauty of this as I've said so many times before if you do break anything it will just glue back together with styrene when you've got styrene if it's going to distort it'll bend or oh, that just broke but you can see that before it distort before it breaks you can see it turning white it stretches it goes out of shape and then it breaks and it's nigh on impossible to glue it back together the same whereas with resin it just snaps and you just glue it back together so it's, there's no problem whatsoever so if you have got broken parts you should be okay to carry on but this looks so well packaged and so well designed I don't think there will be any broken parts go through the rest of the instructions here we can see all of the rest of the, uh, the 3d printed parts here you've got the carburetor inlet manifold I think that's the exhaust manifold there is it um, and then we've got these fans, we've got these twin fans going into these housings here. We've got the sump, we've got some pipe work, we've got the oil uh, oil can mounts, which apparently are wrong in the dashvert kit. Uh, we've got some more pipe work here. It's all very, very finely, finely printed or moulded, whatever you want to call it. Beautifully made stuff. And I think the detail on here is, well, I know the detail on here is going to be superior to what you're getting in the dashvert kit because with 3D printing you can get you know higher levels of detail than you will with molding um, because of the restrictions of having the tool open and closing and stuff unless you have multi-slide or a million parts or whatever so um, here we're going through the instructions so step one we're going to assemble the the bulkhead so you've got the plastic kit part there A11 which is colored in this like blue gray color and then we've got the resin parts going on so you've got the reverse side of the instrument panel there um, and you've got the actual bulkhead itself going on so you've got all this internal detail and then we're going to build up the actual engine itself so we're fitting the the bell housing to the block fitted the cam cover or the rocker cover whatever it is to the top in that manifold and carburetor some sort of pump there and then we've got what looks like a starter motor there going on come on to the other side we've got a brass part there which looks like some kind of breather and then we've got, oh, there's the starter motor, so I don't know what that is there, it might be an auxiliary starter motor or something. And then we've got like a dynamo and some sort of other pump here, uh, an exhaust manifold. And then you've got the sump going on and it's saying optional for engine um, display. So I'm guessing what you would do if you want to cut the bottom of the, the sump out in the kit, then that will fit. I'm guessing if you don't use... Or I'm guessing the sump is actually moulded into the base of the kit. As I say, I don't have the kit, so I don't know. But if you cut the kit open, that will fit. Otherwise, you just I think you're just going to mount this engine in there. Then we come to... Sorry, that's step five. Step three... I would say that's step four and that's step five. Um, and then we've got the uh, inlet. We're, we're, this is something I did notice. It, it gives you no indication as how the engine is mounted to the bulkhead. Probably when you build it, it will become obvious, but it looks like the engine has just suddenly found itself attached to the bulkhead. Uh, and you've got this plate going on the bottom, that's the bottom half of the bulkhead. We've got the main belt, belts and pulleys going on, the air intake system, a couple of pipes on the front, and then the uh, fuel pump going in the side there. Then we're coming down to step six. We're going to build up this radiator. So we've got the header tank on there, we've got the fans going in, and then it's all closed up. And then we've got these 24 pieces of photo etch going in here um, and then we're going to fit the actual radiator okay so we fitted all this now into the into the actual model itself so um, it doesn't actually say, show you that but we've, after you've done this you're actually going to fit it into the model so here it is out again 
I don't really know what's going on here. Or are they telling you just to put the engine into the body, fit the radiator to the engine, and then once it's all dry, remove it? Because here it's all out again, look. So, yeah, be careful what you're gluing. And then, with me not having the kit here, I'm afraid I can't help. Um, and then here we've got the, some more pipe work going on, which is going to look absolutely amazing. We've got the linkage there for the throttle going on, which is very nice indeed. Brass parts and resin parts involved in that. And then we've got some more pipe work over here. Uh, we've got like, that looks like an oil cleaner there. We've got some bits and pieces here going on the bulkhead. You can see all those there. And then we've got some more pipe work down the bottom. We've got our steering box with steering column. So that's going in. So as I say, it's, a, it's really a full engine bay detail set. It's not just an engine. And then we've got the brass supports there for the actual radiator itself. And we've got the exhaust pipe going onto there. So uh, yeah, it looks like it's unsilenced. If that just comes straight out. And then we've got R50 is optional. And then we've also got R52, which is optional. That's an aerial mount with a um, with a brass with a brass aerial on there. So uh, yeah, it's not just the engine bay. You've got this little external piece there as well. So all in all, very nice. Typical Pontos instructions, a little bit difficult to get your head around. But what you need to do, I mean, you should do this with all the instructions anyway, even Airfix, Revell, is sit down, go through it, understand what you're doing. Don't just go piling in um, and, you know, make sure you understand what's going on. Like for, for example, here, you know, you've got step six. Sorry, step six here, you build up the radiator. Step seven, the engine is actually in the chassis. Step eight, it's out again. So be very, very careful what you're doing and don't go gluing anything too much. And then here you've got step 10 with the engine out and then 11, it's in there again. So just be careful. I think what they're trying to say here is dry fit the engine with the bulkhead into the chassis and then fit the radiator. It's going to be attached to the engine with the pipes and everything and then remove it as a lump to fit all this stuff down here. OK, so let's have a look at the actual model itself. It's come in this lovely little box. It's very well packaged in two bags. And as you can see, every single part is very, very well protected with this frame around the outside. KA models take note. Um, and then the same here, got this big chunky bulkhead, and even though it's a big chunky part, it's still got this lovely cage around it. In fact, if you could get those parts out without damaging the cage, you could make some little model cages. <laughs> um, I'm just being silly. It's got a turn brass parts in here. Uh, be careful of the little, you can see on the end of that one there, there's a little bit of swarf. That's actually a piece of swarf that has to come off. Um, with the ship kits and stuff, be very careful because sometimes you might think it's a piece of swarf and it'll be a bell or something. So lovely little brag of, bag of brass parts there. We've got a single sheet of photo etch. And it's stainless steel. So that's great. I'm glad they've done that because these are grills for the radiator. And keeping them straight in brass would be quite difficult. But in stainless steel, because it's quite springy, it makes it a lot easier. So it's either going to be stainless steel or nickel steel or something like that. And then here we have our dry rub transfers. So this is obviously for your for your uh, model itself. So very nice indeed. Um, so there we go. We'll have a quick look at the photo etch. It's, um, I don't think it's magnetic. So the nickel silver or uh, good quality stainless steel. But um, yes, uh, it's very nice. Very nicely done, very sharp, tiny little connection points, which is always good to see. Makes it easy to get off, especially if it is stainless. Can I get this bag open? Open, please. Thank you. It just wants to close up on me. There we are. Let's so get that in there like that for safekeeping. And obviously the dry transfers are exactly what they say they are. You basically cut them off the sheet. So you've got the backing sheet on here. So you basically cut them off individually, put them where you want them and rub them and uh, they will go down. So yeah, very nice indeed. Again, this bag doesn't want to open. That's those put away in there. And then our brass parts. 
So we've got all these shafts and stuff. So what have we got here? We've got one of these is an antenna. Um, not sure which one. But we've got these very, very fine turn brass parts. And as you can see, they've got they've got pins on their ends. Beautifully turned, very smooth. They don't have a very coarse finish on them, which is one thing I have heard people moan around with moan about with Pontos. But uh, it looks like that's the antenna there. So um, that's going to be nice on the back of your model rather than a piece of plastic. I think for sixty-one dollars, this is pretty good value for money when you compare it to some other sets. It's uh, it's very good. So we've got some thicker shafts here. So that's probably a steering column and that's going to be part of a linkage or something. So that's all very nice. We've got some turn brass parts there. That's a couple of breathers by the look of it. And these are going in your oil can holders. So you see those there. Very nicely represented indeed. So that's all our brass parts. Let's get onto the photo, the photo etch, the 3D printed parts. We'll do this bag first because this is all the major stuff. So what I'm going to do is try and get this open. There we go. And just gently get this all out of the bag. Be careful not to break anything. It's going to be fun getting this back in. In fact, it probably won't bother. There we are, so that's... Right, so what have we got here? We've got lots and lots of lovely looking bits and pieces. And every single one, other than the sump, is in this lovely protected cage, which is really nicely done. So, um, starting over here, we've got the... Everything's got a number on it. There's R32 there. And we can see here that we have, yeah, we still have, they need a clean, they've still got some cleaning agent on them. Um, we've got the fans there, and as you can see, they are beautiful with their really thin, thin edges and everything. So they're going to be much nicer than the plastic parts. So as I say, you may wish to get this to upgrade your DAS work kit, because, you know, it's going to be nicer than the plastic parts. There's the second fan there, and then there's the actual radiator, or the fan support. You can see we've got the belts on there, we've got the pulleys, and we've got all the nut and bolt detail on it. You can see in the centre, you have the large nut, you have the spindle with the hole in the end, and you've got the four bolts there holding the actual fan pulley on. And it's all beautifully detailed, beautifully done. That's all going to look lovely under a coat of paint. And that's going to glue onto the back of the radiator, which is here. So here's the rear side of the radiator. There's the top detail. As you can see down here on the front, on the top, we've got all that moulded on, or printed on detail, should I say. And they've got the radi actual radiator grill itself. And then in there, you're going to add all those photo etch louvers, 24 of them. Have some fun with that. We've got a overflow pipe or something there printed onto the side of there as you can see on that corner there the sump um, we can see some printing lines in there but I can hardly feel them they, they look a lot worse than they are to be honest but, um, that's one of the downfalls of, of, of 3d printing you get these lines depending on the uh, the fineness of it all then here we've got the actual main engine block itself. And I was looking at this earlier and comparing it to the Das Werk one, and it is a lot nicer than the plastic parts. So you can see we've got um, fixing detail around the outside of there because that rocker cover is going to fit within that area. So yeah, the block is, is lovely, very nice indeed. And we've got that piece down in there. I think that's part of an engine mount or something. And then also in here in the sides, we've got some pipe work. So we've got a little piece there. And then we've got some pipe work you can see in there, which is 
sitting up in front of the engine so be very careful just come along with your snips snip away the cage and then work your way in and uh, just cut everything from the bottom first or, or, or cut near the top and then what I would suggest is I think I've shown this before just you know cut from the top and then break the pins away go in from the top break the pins away and just work your way in sensibly and make sure you're not ended up with you know if you've got a big piece like this and it's got a little pipe on the back make sure one of the first parts you cut is the little pipe because you don't want all that weight hanging on that pipe it'll just snap off and then here we have the uh, rocker cover cam cover again that's that's got that liquid on it um, but it's also got the 3d printing marks in it so cut a primer and a sand and that'll soon disappear here's the exhaust manifold which is very nice Inlet manifold, this, this is a lot nicer than the kit part here. So the inlet manifold with the carburetor, and it's got all the linkages on the sides and everything. You can see here we've got some lifting eyes on this side. And then on this side we've got some other tiny little parts. I think that's parts of the throttle linkage. But uh, be very careful what you're throwing away and what you're breaking. You don't just assume that everything around there is junk. It's not. They've got all the part numbers actually printed onto the base as you can see there but that's lovely very nice uh, what's this here I think that's going to be part of the air cleaner it's like the air cleaner bowl okay Got the bell housing there with the bolt detail and everything on the back that's all very nice then we've got this pump thing, whatever it is. Um, not sure, it's probably a compressor of some sort, isn't it, to feed something else? That's beautifully done. Fully detailed all the way around. And this is the thing you see, you don't have this restriction like you do with injection molding. You can actually produce 360 degree detail. Um, not got a clue what that is, but it's it's some sort of valve body because it's got pipes coming in and out of it, mounted on a solid little lump. That's the um, header tank for the radiator. You can see the cap on there, the pipe coming for the overflow, and then you've got the uh, the piece on the back there where the pipe's going to lead down into the radiator. We have here, this is that thing that goes onto the engine slash bell housing. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Um, here we have, that is, I think, the dynamo. Could be wrong. It's been known. <laughs> um, but that's, uh, that's very nice. See, again, 360 degree detail. No restrictions on the moulding. Also, you've got no seam lines or anything to clean up because they don't, they're do not they not moulded in halves. Got some pipe work there with a, a little wing nut on there. A little wing nut that's holding that on. It's got a weld seam down the side of it by the look of it. It's printed on. And then here we have, that's the only broken piece so far, is that little leg there is broken out of there. That is a... Um, something or other has pipes coming out of it some sort of pump vacuum pump or whatever but yeah very nice indeed and then this part here that looks like it's the starter motor again 360 degree detail beautifully done and finally for this bag got that little pipe there like a radiator hose by the look of it probably a top hose or something so that's that bag over there. Let's have a look at this bag in here. And I must say that William contacted me um, and asked if he sent this, would I review it? And I said, by all means, sir, you can send me what you want and I'll review it. And uh, I, have, I have a feeling that William is something to do with Trumpeter. Trumpeter slash Hobby Boss, because... Um, this stuff it's kind of 
I think it needs to be washed off with some IPA. Um, but I think William is something to do with uh, Hobby Boss Trumpeter. And um, he said, if you'd like me to send you one, I will... Uh, if you'd, like, if you'd like me to send you one, would you review it sort of thing? I was like, yep, sure, I will do that for you, sir. So that's what we're doing. So, starting off with bag two, got the big parts here. This is resin part 01, and this is your bulkhead. We've also got another part of the bulkhead down there by the look of it. So that's all very nice. We've got the pedal box there, and the steering column is going to go in here, and that's where your brake master cylinder is going to go, I'm guessing, and that's where the two oil can holders go. This film that's on here, I mean, I can only assume it's what they use to wash the parts or to help cure the parts after. I've got a feeling, in fact, let's just do a little test. I've got a feeling, I've been told before, that with 3D printed parts, let's use a new cotton bud just in case. With new 3D printed parts, you wash them in IPA and it gets all that residue off. Where's that one here? Here we go. You can see we've got this shiny residue on here. I'm just seeing if this will remove it. It certainly appears to. Yes, it does. So you can see on there. Yeah, it's very strange. It just comes, just washes off. You can see on here we've got some marks. I should be able to just remove that. You may even find that you can wash them in warm soapy water. I think they definitely need a clean because they've got this, this residue on them, whatever it is. People who know about 3D printing can tell me. But, um, maybe it's uncured resin, I'm not sure. It's, it's, it's very shiny, we'll have a look in a minute. So there's our main bulkhead, very nicely done. And that's just going to glue to your trumpeter bulkhead. Here we have the belts. This is the main belt pulley assembly on the front. You've got some, some part of it attached to it there. And as you can see, we've got all the lovely bolt detail in there. Very nice indeed. We've got some other greeblies here going around the outside. You can see on the base around that 10 there, you can see that area of shiny it almost looks like clear resin if you know what it is please tell me in the comments I don't know what that is and also tell me is that is that just a result of the uh, process or is it poor processing or you know is it good bad indifferent does it matter this seems to be taking it off but um Moving along, there's a box of pipes there. So you've got one, two, three, four pipes. 3D printed, they're all very nice indeed. And then here we have, I've just broken that box. Um, here we have three pipes and a box. You can see these pipes have the, the Jubilee clips molded onto them as well. Which is very nice. This is the reverse side of the dashboard, so this is the back of your instrument cluster. And, um, and you can see on there that very, very fine detail here. You, got the, you can see the clamps that hold the gauges in. So a little bit of wire on them, really make that pop. As I say, you might want to upgrade your dashboard kit with this. Uh, that's the bottom, I think, of the expansion tank that goes on the top of the... No, it's not. That's in the dashboard kit. It's a two-piece part. Not sure. It's some sort of little bracket or something. You can see the bolt detail on there. Very nicely done. Here's our two oil can holders. These are going to have the brass bits glued into the top of them. And apparently these are incorrect in the dashboard kit. Um, here we have that's that bottom piece of the bulkhead and we have some other bits in there as well so that's all very nice and then here we have the air cleaner 
What's that on there? Just needs a bit of a clean up, it's just sort of stuck to it. But, uh, there's our air cleaner, there's our horn. See the front face of the horn is lovely. There's some electrical switches there by the look of it. And is that that antenna mount there, which was optional? But you've got the air cleaner with the lovely sort of hand wheel that holds it down on the top. And then finally, folks, there's this thing here, which is the steering box. So you're going to put the brass shaft in there. You can see this as the steering box. It's beautifully detailed. Again, you have these all this detail all the way around. No slide molding, no seam lines, no nothing. Just cut it off, stick it on. Job done. So yeah, very, very nice. And in my opinion, you know, in these days of ever rising costs and everything becoming ridiculously expensive, I think $61 for that is 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 very good indeed when you consider you know the price of some photo sets um, and you think of the the work and the time that's gone into this um, I think it's, it's superb it's a very quality piece of kit as I say please let me know in the comments about those shiny bits I'd love to know what they are um, but they don't like on there you can see on this part here you can see the shiny stuff is up the side of it there I'm not sure if we can get it off with IPA or not. It, it, it appears to, but then I've got second thoughts. I don't know. But please let me know in the comments what to do. How to get rid of that. If it should be there. Is it poor processing? Is it just a result of the process? You know, please let me know in the comments. Right. So that has been... 16001FT 116th SD KFC 251 engine detail upset for the trumpeter kit the KFC 251D slash 22D and um, very very nice it's made by Pontos model in Korea South Korea as I say you won't be able to get it from them because it will be exclusively available from kinggang5512 at gmail.com so you can drop him an email and he'll come back to you with an invoice. Send him an email, tell him where you live and what you want to buy. And he'll come back to you with a, with a, a PayPal invoice. Um, or you can go over to his Facebook page at King's Detailing and all the details about how to buy it will be there. And I'm sure that within a couple of hours of this video going out, there'll be a link to this video on his Facebook page because I will tell him as soon as it goes out. So there we go. Um, so thank you for watching and I will uh, see you all soon. Um, I may well put this in my Dasvirk KFC 251 if I ever build it. I have got a, a list of kits to do as long as a, a giraffe's neck. So uh, there we go. So thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. Any comments, questions, stick them down below and uh, I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Bye for now.